We are back down at the beautiful Cobram Estate. We've got a very, very special guest with us today, Mr. Rob McGovern. How are you, mate? Good. Thank Matt, you for having you? us. Very well. Now, Rob is a co-founder of Boundary Bend, which has now evolved into Cobram Estate, and we are here working with your sensational extra virgin olive oil, mate. We're going to be doing part cooking, part masterclass today. So Rob's the man. He's got all of the knowledge that we're going to impart onto you guys. So we're going to be doing a risotto milanese. So it's it's basically a saffron risotto, and we've chosen to go with the the light. Cobram Estate Extra Virgin Olive Oil. It's going to hang out in the background, let the saffron come through. The light is just a, it's an extra virgin, which means it's a juice of fresh olives, but yep. it's a lighter style. So a bit like Pinot Noir is a light wine style. Yep. The variety in this is called Arbicana, and it's a light olive oil. And because it's got less antioxidants in it, it has less pungency, less bitterness, and a little bit less smell. So it's just not as overpowering and yep. a bit more subtle. Which is perfect for what we're going to be doing today. Now, extra virgin olive oil, olive oil, I think everyone's had that uh, that scenario where you walk into the, the supermarket, you look at that wall of 400 different bottles of olive oil, and you cannot break down what's what. So extra virgin olive oil, olive oil, what's the difference? Yeah, look, there's, there's huge differences within the quality of extra virgin and extra virgin really is a term that says that it's meets certain parameters so it's yep. the highest quality it's the juice of fresh olives olives that aren't very good or olive oil that's not good and it has to be refined and the refining process is heat chemicals and solvents to neutralize the oil which all the is nasty bad all yep. the nasty and then they put a little tiny bit of extra virgin on top and they call it extra light <laughs> or pure or something like that to yep. try and mislead a consumer into thinking that must be good yep. but it's really so inferior to extra virgin Cobram, we only produce extra virgin olive oil and we spoke about the light yep. and that's the variety called Arbicana. we have a medium style which is like a bit more pungency a bit more bitterness on the tongue we call it the classic but it's a medium style yep. and then we have a robust style which is a lot Lot more antioxidants. It's pretty it's a, heavy duty. Yeah, pretty heavy yeah. duty. <laughs> it's the antioxidants. The antioxidants drive the health benefits. So it's a really good thing having that pepperiness and bitterness on the tongue. So you're giving me tips about olive oil. Hopefully I can give you a tip about cooking, mate. Perfect. Can't, right. wait. Okay. Can't wait. Can't okay. wait. So yeah. I'm going to get this nice and fine on the grater. So we we're just talking about the robust and saying that that's probably yeah. the one. Because so if you put so it in the terms dark. of wine analogy, it's sort of like a cabernet from. Kunawara or something like that. So, yep. so quite intense, quite big. bitter. Yep. But the health benefits, the flavour, the smell, I suppose the intensity is just all driven from those antioxidants. And lots of people say, and I always get asked, can you cook in olive oil and is it good? And the research shows that it's actually the most stable oil to cook with. And in fact, it's not can you cook with it, it's that you should cook with it. So, yep. And it's hugely resistant to heat and cooking. So it's a monounsaturated fat principally, which is a healthy fat and that's a very stable fat. Yeah. And it's also got so many as antioxidants in it. I'm absolutely loving the fact that we are cooking a traditional, authentic Italian dish using good Australian extra virgin olive oil. Why is that? And why is it the Aussies are producing better gear than the Europeans? It all starts with the olive. And if you crush a fresh olive, you get fresh extra virgin olive oil. Just like when you squeeze a fresh orange, you get amazing tasting orange juice. So it's, it's no different, and because our labour costs are so high here, the groves are new, it's all mechanical, it's four hours from when we pick it from the tree to when it's crushed. You know, all of the olive itself infuses into the oil in that crushing process, and unfortunately, half the world's olive oil, when it's crushed, the olives are so rotten when they're crushed yeah. that the oil's not fit for human consumption, so they have to refine it and then they send it here as extra light and pure. And it's really hard to make high quality extra virgin. And certainly, Italy makes some amazing olive oil, Greece, Spain, all these countries make some amazing olive oil, but yeah. their consumers know what good olive oil is and they certainly don't send it here, generally speaking. Yeah. So. Onion and garlic have started to, to cook out. Just going in with a, a good hit of saffron. So now I'm just gonna go in with the uh, arborio rice and just gonna start to toast that off a little bit and then go in with a little bit of uh, white wine and start reducing. It looks like it needs a little bit of olive oil. Go on, mate. Do the honours. Do the honours. Get in there. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Does that look a little bit too dry to you, mate? Yeah. Is that better? There we go. Look at that. Glossy. It didn't always start with 
olive oil for you, did it? Yeah, always been in farming, but not in horticulture, and bought a little vineyard in Renmark, and a friend and I from college thought, why don't we plant some olives, and we just started on this 20-year journey to try and learn you know, how to grow them and how to do it cost-effectively and how to produce really high quality, and got an amazing team of people at, at Cobram Estate, and we specialise in it, and we never want Cobram to be more than half our production because we it's hard to produce really high-quality extra virgin, and we always want to so over deliver on quality. Like and, yeah, so we're, we're planting more groves at the moment just so that we can still, you know, supply to consumers but not compromise on the quality bit. So. Unbelievable. Mm. So we've just gone in with a, oh, I reckon, a, a cup of dry white wine. Now that that wine has started to cook out, I can go in bit by bit. We're just using a, a good quality veggie stock that we've brought up to a boil. So you want to have a hot stock, you don't want to add cold stock into your rice it's gonna to have to work too hard and it will cook uneven. So the outside will cook faster than the inside. So nice hot stock in there. Gradually, bit by bit, we'll work it through. And this will take about 15 minutes to get all of that stock in there and get a nice creamy texture on that rice. Ooh, perfect. Not Learning a few things yeah, here, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> So that's a, about a litre and a half. So there's 400 grams of rice. That's a, your general rule, about a litre and a half of stock. So I'll mix this last bit of stock through. A little bit of butter. Perfect. Good sprinkle of parmesan. And then we'll figure out where we're sitting with salt. This might be quite all right. The, the, uh, the stock was seasoned. The parmesan's got salt. So I think we might be looking okay for salt content. Do you want to have a quick taste of that, mate? Oh, I'll see how we're looking. Mmm, yum. All right. Really good. Don't think it needs salt though. No, you're good. Good. Yeah, all right, done. I'll take that. <laughs> that's the consistency that you're after with a risotto. Super creamy. That's the whole point of working it through. It is, as you said, it's a labor of love. You've really got to stick with it, work it through. That's the starch coming off the rice and giving us that creamy consistency. And you still want to be able to taste each individual grain of rice. There we go. All right. I can throw that. In we go. And see how it just drapes over itself, relaxes into the bowl. Finishing touch, just a little sprinkle of parmesan. Cracked pepper? Yep, needs yep. a little bit of cracked pepper. And will that become more firm as it just cools down and the rice keeps soaking? Exactly. So if you have it on a plate, so it should be nice and flat, you eat from the outside in. Uh, so the inside stays warm and bit by bit by bit, and then it should be still a perfect texture when you get to the centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, mate. There is a saffron, an absolute classic Italian dish using your phenomenal extra virgin olive oil. Thank you very much. You can come again. Any Thank day. you, mate. I will, most certainly.